I teach in English, home language and first additional language. It is now today, the 24th of February. It's about a week and a half, I think, to go before lectures start. But I thought I'd just get the welcome going um, so I can upload it on Canvas so you can see a little bit about what teaching English is all about. Um, I hope you can enjoy the course because my motto is teaching English is fun because the best teachers are English teachers. So I'm just going to share my screen with you. So we can find my PowerPoint. Let's share it. Here we go. As you can see, this is a combined lecture um, for TEFS. Um, I'm including the S's, the SP's as well, because the lecturer might not be able to get this up and running because she's just a newly appointed lecturer. And it's also home language FETs and SP. So just a general welcome and introduction for our 13th of March start of this new academic year. So let me go to my next slide. Oh, well, of course, welcome to you all. And then, of course, um, we must make it all fun in the classroom. Otherwise, who wants to come to English anyway or to any class anyway? So let's get some information about who I am. So I am, what you need to know, that is, um, my name is Dr. Marcel Heron, and you can always find me in my email box. That's the best way to access me. Marcel H at stardio.ac.za. And then of course, I love teaching English. It's my passion. It's the thing I enjoy the most, um, other than running and walking along the beach. And yes, as I said, I want you all to be excited and energized for the start of this new academic year and seeing what teaching English is all about. So just before we start, as I said to you, I live in my email box. So when you send me emails, remember, I have got three different classes. So I differentiate between all of you with your course codes. So that is TFF, that's um, First Additional Language FET, TH, uh, THF, that's Home Language FET, or THS, that's SPs. Okay, so when you write into me on your subject line, the first thing you do before you even compose your email to me is write your code in. I need to know that before. So I know where to place your concern and how to address it. Because remember, I teach three different courses. So something would be very good, something like this. TFF 701 Assignment 1 Submission as your subject line of your email. Never leave it blank and just never leave it as a generic um, type of subject line. Always give your code. Um, also use your registered name. I know you've all or a lot of you have got many other names, but Stadio knows you by your registered name. So when you when you refer to anything and you use your name, please use your registered name. Okay. Um, because I often search with you using initials or your name to find out where you are. Also use your Stadio email address because you know that's got your ID, it's got your it's not your ID, it's got your student number in it. So I can actually identify who you are and go and look for you if I need to find you. And then finally, you can then refer to whatever you want to in the details of your actual um, email, remembering to address me in the email and to sign off as well. Um, as you can see, this is my state a lot of the time when I get a influx of emails and I actually don't know who is sending them. There's no name, there's no content, um, there's no code. Um, and then that means I've got to start going backwards and forwards, trying to determine what actually the problem is. And that wastes a lot of time and energy. Yes, for example, I quickly went into my mailbox from last semester and just grabbed one. Um, if you have a look here, you can see the subject line, TEFS702 and THF702 assignment three marks. So the way I can see the codes and I can see what the issue is. It's something about assignment three mark. Um, I am addressed. Good morning, Dr. Marcel. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, someone. Just greet me. Thank you. And then after you've written your little concise, detailed message, um, your name, kind regards, Liana, whatever it might be, Asanda, Leander, Mtombi, okay, whatever your name might be. And mail it off to me. And like this, I can respond to it quite easily. Right, what about me? Okay, I just said my name is Marcel Heron. As you can see, I come from Kabeha. Um, I'm sure you can all say that now. That's the XPE. And I worked at the Nelson Mandela University. I'm surrounded by the sea and I've always had a passion for the sea. So I'm living in the perfect environment here in Port Elizabeth. Um, yes, I taught at NMU, which is right at the bottom of Africa. 
um, in Nelson Mandela metropolitan area in that in the state of Eastern Cape, the poorest, I think, the province in South Africa, but it's one of the most beautiful provinces as well. And teaching students from all over the world, um, it's got about five campuses, NMU, about 30,000 plus, basically the same as study at the moment, um, from all over, all over the world. So I'm used to teaching students from wherever, all over, different faculties and so on. Um, from there, there, you can see my beautiful students, beautiful PE as well. I left um, there to go and teach in the UAE um, at Skyline University College in a place called, well, in Emirate called um, Sharjah. I don't know if you know the UAE. And um, it was a business administration university be coming down to land. And you'll soon see it. There it is. And I taught English composition, advanced composition, academic literacy, and all those good subjects at this Bachelor of Administration University. And we also had MBA subjects happening there in the desert right in University City. Um, there's a faculty from all over the world, um, and I was on the right there, as you can see. We often had events in the evenings, I taught in the evenings as well, and these are some of the faculties there, and the heads of department, the CEO, and so on. From there, I went to Highland Colleges of Technology in Russell Kaima, um, which was a government university with the men's and female campuses separately, and there are some of my male students. We did um, sort of a pollution report and went and did clear up around the university and wrote a report on that for sustainability. And there are my awesome female students um, working hard at the quiz, I think it was. And that was my last day there, the end of, 17, end of 2019. I left there to come to Stardio and we started the PGCE program in 2020 um, and I was part of that. And this is the, um, the Montana campus and there are a lot of the um, lecturers that are still part of the PGCE program. And there I am right at the back. Okay, and I'm still there now, 2023. This was a breakfast we had in Port Elizabeth. Oops, let me go back. And um, with the PE faculty that are part of the PGCE program, you can see there's quite a group of us with the head of academics as well as the, the dean, the, the, um, the main dean of the education faculty. You might recognize a few of the people. And we were at a workshop. I'm in Johannesburg at Centurion campus last week, learning all new ways to make our students um, engage and keep them busy. And there we are, some of the group from the languages group working together on some of the tasks we've been given. So we are being kept very active. So I need to know how you're feeling. This comes to one of our first tasks. Um, and at this point, how you feeling at the start of the academic year, and especially for your PGCE, um, lots of faces there. Um, hopefully, it's not all the negative emotions like being angry or bored or confused, although confusion seems to crop, it, crop up a lot of the time. Um, hopefully, more the happy content um, slots here. But whatever it might be, you're going to get a chance to let me know how you're feeling by going to the menti.com link that's in your week one. Um, I'll show you later how you can access it and just giving me three words to describe how you're feeling. Okay, and then I will give you feedback about what most of my students are feeling a bit later on. Okay, so that's one of your first tasks to do for me. Very hard. How are you feeling? Okay. Right, let's look at the prescribed readings. So we've got a prescribed textbook, um, which is Ferreira. There it is. I'll show you a picture of it now. It's called Teaching Language. It is a 2009 edition, but it's I, every, look, every year I look for a, a more up-to-date um, version of um, Ferreira's Teaching English, Teaching Language. And I haven't found it yet, but I'm continuing my search. But it seems to cover most things. Um, and although um, it is dated and doesn't have CAPS, it does cover a lot of the language teaching skills. There's also the CAPS document, which I've already uploaded for you on week one links on Canvas. So you've got access to that if you are the FETs or SPs. I have put the relevant ones um, in, in week one links. And then the recommended reading is um, Colleen as well. I think I'm balancing my laptop on Colleen, but I'll show you a picture of that now. Um, Clean's 2015, and he's got quite this chapter one says a lot about CAPS, the um, curriculum assessment um, policy um, statement, which gives you a lot of details of what you need to know about CAPS. But we're going to refer to it a lot during this year, so you'll soon become quite au fait with it. And there's the policy, um, the CAPS 
document for you all and is uploaded already on Canvas. Um, this is the uh, Anna Ferreira 2009 teaching language, which you, I refer to all the time. It's in all the slides and all the PowerPoints. And yes, um, Roy Colleen and um, 2015 teaching strategies, quality teaching and learning. This, as I said, chapter one has a lot about the CAPS document in, um, although it is quite generic, you can use this textbook for any specialization. It refers not only to languages, but to, to um, LO, to NS, to whatever you're going to teach, you can use this quite appropriately. So it's a textbook to have for all your courses, okay, all your specializations. So in semester one, what are we going to do um, in PGCE? First of unit one, um, if you've, um, First additional language, you're going to look at language acquisition theories, but we're also going to look at theories of teaching for home language as well as for first additional language, um, things like communicative language teaching, text-based teaching. Um, these are also important in the teaching of languages. And we're also going to interrogate the CAPS document. So you're going to know something about what CAPS is all about. Then um, in unit two, we can look at um, integrating communicative skills in the classroom. Um, and particularly, we're going to look at listening activities, listening skills, and blah, blah, blah. Yes, the speaking skills we're also going to look at in Unit 2. In Unit 3, which you finish off the semester with, it's teaching reading. And it's going to look at reading itself as an activity and a practice, but also looking at reading, looking at different genres, um, because we all love reading. So we're going to look at poetry, we're going to look at film study, we're going to look at drama, we're going to look at visual literacy, all the things that include some reading as well. So let's look at what, you're, what you have enrolled for, what you have registered for, the distance learning model. Okay, so PGC is going to be delivered using a DL approach. Now, if you haven't done DL before, this is going to be a pretty much a new experience for you, especially using an LMS, which is Canvas. You'll hear all about that to access all the materials and you'll use email most of the time to access me as well. So do you all understand what that means? Okay, and you might be scratching your head at this point and saying, what's that? Okay, let's look at what the DL approach is for Stadio. What is distance learning? Well, it's an online style of learning. It's not face-to-face, -face, it's not contact, all right? Um, there we go. It's not going to be in the classroom. You're not going to be in my office and coming to visit me or coming into my class and seeing what's happening, seeing your, your buddies, although you might see them if you come on campus. Um, it's going to be very independent. You're going to do this yourself, and this might be a new experience for you. I know the WhatsApp groups really help and the buddies really help. I um, hope I can help if you've got an issue to come back and quiz about things that you're not too sure about, but you're not going to be able to have a class that you can actually go to and discuss things, although we do have our face-to-face -face Zoom sessions, which you can chat online with me. Okay, we may be going to do something that we can actually engage more so that you can have access to me and ask questions online. Right, um, hopefully you're all going to have online access. That means you've got to have data, you've got to have a device. Yes, you've got to have connectivity, you can't be too many outages, you're going to have your battery charged, all those important things that we as South Africans know a lot about. And hopefully you're going to be engaged, it means you can participate, you can question, um, you're not going to sit passively at home in front of your laptop, you're going to become a communicative part of the whole teaching, although it'll be an online platform that we're doing this from. You're going to rely on Canvas, your LMS, and I'm going to go into a bit of Canvas now. You'll see what I mean when I'm talking about it. Some of you might know exactly what I'm talking about. You're going to rely on online sessions. This is what we call a recording. Um, I'm recording my presentation, and I'm going to give you a link, and that's how you're going to access this. Um, there'll also be announcements I will send out. Um, this is for you if there's an alert or you need to take note of something to remind you of an um, assignment that's due, a tracking, something that's changed. I will send out announcements to everybody. And of course, I'll stand by his email. I'm always accessible there. Um, if I see the too many issues coming up in email, I will send out an announcement relating to these issues. Okay, I hope that helps a bit. So we're moving into the online space, the online platform. It's a digital way of studying, but we are accessible and you are exposed to me and others through it as well. If you join the chat sessions, you'll see what other people are talking about as well. Okay, 
let's go and have a look at the portal. So if you're going to go onto Canvas, you will get the link to go to the login page. It's going to look something like this. Um, and you're going to log in with your password, your student number, I don't know, whatever they give you, and you can log into the portal. And if you're teaching, this is an example I've just used from my TEFF701 page, it'll look something like this. It's your landing page. Um, the blue will show the name of the course, and down the left-hand side, you'll see um, the home page, the assignments page, the chat page, discussions, grades, quizzes, key dates, um, online library, online sessions, and so on. So all that is accessible to you. Um, you will just have to go and click on the link, and you can interactively go to whatever is there. There we go. Um, you can see information about the module, meet the lecturer. There's something about me there. There's key dates. All of that is accessible for you. Yes, and if you go scroll a bit further down, this is what I'm talking about, the quick links. There we go. For each week, there's a quick link. The first two weeks will be shown um, when you go in, but the others will only be released as they come on board. You'll see there are dates there. The 13th of March, when it starts, is when week one is released. Then week two is released, although you should be able to see it when you start. But week three will only be revealed from the 27th. I'm going to add that information on you so that you don't become confused. Um, with that said, I think I'll just show you a live move over. So I'm going to stop my share. And then I'm going to share again and show you a live going into what this is all about. I'm going to share my screen now again with you. And let's see. I hope this is going to work. I should be sharing my screen, but I don't know I'm seeing these like arrows. Yeah, stop the share. I'm going to share again, share my screen. Okay, I'm going to try again. Um, yes, let's go here, share a screen. Yes, I think that's better. This is what I can see. Um, if you look at courses that I'm pushing, these are all the courses that I teach. And I'm going to go into the, the Blueprint for Teaching English First Additional Language FET, just for example. I'm going to push on there. And when I do that, I come in on what I can see as the teacher, okay, the lecturer. So there you can see everything about it. But if I show you the student view, I'm going to go and show you the student view. It's like the slide I was showing you just now. There are all the places I was showing you. This is meet your lecturer. If you go in there, you will see me, okay? And everything about me. There we go, my contact information. And um, if I wanna go back out of that, I just push the, the homepage about this module. I click there. And there's everything about teaching English with additional language and what the outcomes are. There's your assessment guideline is over here, your prescribed resources, the textbook and the clean and the CAPS document are all there. So if I go out of that again, and I want to go to look at the key dates, there we go, key dates. There you can see I've listed all the key dates. Now you can see the online trackers and their dates, when the due dates are, there's your assignments, your three assignments, um, going right up to week 11. So all the key dates are there. And if the final thing I want to show you is the quick links. Those are the words that we're going to use. Quick links there is unit one, week one. Okay, so I'm going to click on week one over there. And you can see it's not available yet. But if I go onto courses again and get out the student view, I'm going to need the student view you'll see from my view because I can see it. Um, this is what I can see. Okay, so quick links, week one, principles of language teaching and learning. There's a bit of an introduction there for you. There's a to-do list, um, the resource list for the principles of language teaching and how welcome will be in here. There is the Ferreira text, which you have to read. Yeah, is a welcome introduction recording that you'll see here. And these are informal surveys. And there's the menti one I spoke about. How are you feeling at the start of semester one? Okay. And you'll click on that and you'll complete it. There's also a Kahoot quiz, which is the quiz that you're going to do informal about how well you listen to this lecture. And there's like a little task here that you've got here is to, if you are TFF, to list five key elements to analyze an advertisement. So you're going to click on the link and 
put five things up there. All right. And then I will see that and share it with everyone. And then your first assignment is here. You can submit assessments. And here's your first line online tracking, which is a reflection task. You're going to write a paragraph telling me all about yourself. Okay. So I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint again. And let's go on with our... There we are. We were over here. There we go. We're going to move on now. And let's move on from here. You know what CAPS is all about. Now, if I can just get my PowerPoint to move, I'm going to just share again. Yeah, I should be able to move it. Let me go again. Let's try there. Here we go. So what does this course mean for the TFF and THF courses? Okay, it means that we're going to have three delivery methods. We're going to have recordings, which can be what I'm doing now, what I call a canned recording. We can also have a Zoom, which are going to be three of them. They have three face-to-face -face ones, one in week two, where I'm going to introduce again, and I'm going to be talking to you live on Zoom. Um, then there's one just before assignment two, and there's one at the end. So there'll be three actual live sessions with you. And also we have weekly online trackers. That means anything that I've spoken about in this um, lecture, you can get a 10 question, multiple choice question on, and those all count towards your participation mark. Okay, so there are online trackers most weeks, okay, and they're very quick, 10 minutes, and they give you marks for your participation mark. Okay, so the recording lessons, what are they? This is what I'm doing now. You get input on the course um, content from it. It can be videos, there can be readings as well, online activities that will be included there. Who does it? You do it independently. Remember, it's an independent course. Where can you do it? You do it using a canvas. You use it. Um, I'm just going to put my, uh, my battery in. Otherwise, it's going to die now. See all the realities of online learning. There you go. That's better. Um, you do it using canvas. And you can do it anywhere. College, home, Starbucks. There you go. Um, you can do it any time, day or night, and how nice is that to work independently doing everything when you want to do it, uh, when you feel like doing it. Yes, and so you will access your quick links, and there you will go to your, your first week, and then you'll watch the video, you'll, un you'll answer the online tracking, and you'll start thinking about your assignment one. There's lots of readings there as well. Here's an example from last semester of what the actual recording will look like. If you look down here, there's the, the world source for semester two, the introduction welcome. There was also like a huge quiz there, which you've got for this week, um, as well as the, the recording and look something like that. So do I have to do the recorded class? So why must I listen to the recorded class? You might be asking yourself that question. So I'm saying, yes, you have to do the recorded class. Okay, you have to watch it because it's going to help you with a lot of things. Yes, it's going to help you to do your online tracking event, okay? That activity you need to do to get your participation mark of 10%. It'll help you also to complete your assignments because I do a lot of um, recorded um, recordings for how to help you with each of the assignments. And then if you don't do it, you will not be able to complete your tasks effectively or your online tracking. So it's, it's important to actually take note of what he said in the recorded class. The Zoom sessions, remember I said there are three of them. So you don't have to have any formal classes. Look at that. Isn't that important? You will access all the course information also from the Zoom class. So you can practice everything. You can apply everything. And you can extend what you've learned. So by watching your face-to-face -face class, you will get practice in what you need to do. You'll be able to have application abilities. And you can extend your learning. And the big thing is there's no more blah, 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 the lecture going on. You can just get on, watch the recording in your own time, and then do the tasks. Okay. And there's a picture of me in my recording. Um, that was week three. Um, there I am. And that was communicative language teaching, which you are going to be doing in week three as well, which is part of your assessment one as well. So you also have um, some online tutorials. You have lots of tracking quizzes. You've got 10 of them, but there's one online tutorial, um, which is also on Canvas. Um, why do you do this? It's um, just to give you an extension on the recordings and the Zoom face-to-face -face classes. 
It also gives you support before your assignments, this kind of task, and also helps you to complete your online quizzes. Where do you find it? Of course, on Canvas. And where? Anywhere. As long as you've got internet access, you can actually access everything. And you've got data, of course, as well. When? Of course, anytime. Who wants to study anywhere else but as distance learning? Yes, and all of this means that you've got to be very conscious of time management because if you just leave it all the time and procrastinate, you might find things are due and you haven't even started your assignment, the online tracking quiz, or listen to your, your recordings. How will DL help you? Yeah, it helps you be very flexible. Although I said time management is so important, you can learn day or night or both. Um, it shows how you can learn. You can do your classes all at once or your recordings at once, or you can break the lesson up. You can listen to half your recording, do half your um your online tracker, then listen to the other half and do the other half of the online track. It's up to you how you work best. Um, there's less class hours. Isn't that amazing? You don't have to travel. You can do your lesson. You can wake up in the morning in your PJs and actually do your class, all right? Or you can do your class in the evenings also in your PJs. Isn't that more comfortable? No one has to see what you look like. Don't put makeup on. You don't have to dress up. Um, so you can do that in your Zoom face-to-face -face class. You can do the recorded sessions, the online trackers. You choose where and when you're going to do it. And that also makes a lot of responsibility. So this will make you a better graduate and teacher, I think, because um, you'll be ready for the workplace, you will be independent, you can work by yourself, you can be active because you are taking charge, and you're showing how accountable and responsible you are. And that all means success. Okay, so are DL courses easier? You might have asked that question, are they easier? No, <laughs> but they are different. Um, they have the same course learning outcomes and assessments as any other course. Um, but if you want to be successful in a distance learning course, you will need to be responsible. No excuses. You can't blame me all the time. If you can't access, you're going to have to take responsibility for your learning. Um, you have to do the online activities on time. So you have to submit the our submission times and then it closes. And that means you can't submit anymore after that time. Internet closes and you can't submit. Um, you can participate in the Zoom face-to-face -face classes as well, which is quite nice. You can enter the chat, you can put your hand up, you can ask questions. And you can look for support actively in the online tutorials. You can come to me and get active support from me as well. Teachers, you do be independent, okay? So you don't have to worry about going to classes. You can manage your time by yourself. You can check your email notifications um, from me regularly. You can do it. You independently can do that at your own time because you will not see me in the classroom. I think, as I said, I live in my email box and I live on Canvas and that's where you can access me as well. Send me emails and notes. Uh, interesting, I do a, a survey monkey frequently and to try and find out where students um, access and when they work. And it seems like um, most of them work anytime convenient to themselves. So they're taking responsibility for that. That's 84% of them will work anytime convenient to themselves. Um, and when do they do it? When they need to do the online tracking quiz. So that is a good thing to have because it's going to force you to go and watch the recording so you can do the quiz, so you can get that 1%, so you can get that 90% at the end of the year or the end of the semester for your participation mark. 23% worked on weekends. Um, you'll see most of your submission, submission dates are on a Sunday night for your online trackers. So those who are working have got the weekends to do it. Um, but 38.4% did this during the week. So quite a lot of students actually work during the week as well, especially if you're full-time students. So your typical weeks might look like this. This is a bit of a schedule that I've got here. The um the gold is my recorded sessions. Like this is one in week one. It's it's a recorded session. However, in week two, week six there that you can see, these are all the Zoom. I must say they're going to be three Zoom sessions and they are green. Um, you've only got one online tutorial um, on the short story and drama. We look at Little Red Riding Hood and the three bears um, to look at the short stories and a bit of drama over there. There's only one of those online. But you've also got a forum discussion, which gives you a time for discussion. That's, um, I think that's in week four as well. 
And this is your assessments. We've got to always get there. You can see if I look over here, we have three assessments. We call them SS1, SS2, and SS3, assignment one, two, and three. First one's a case study, it's 20%. The second one is a, a lesson plan design, which is 30% of your final mark. And the final one is a presentation, which is quite exciting. Um, that's 40% of your final mark. And as I speak about the participation mark, it's 10%. For each of the online trackers, it's 1% that gives you your 10%. And so what about assessments? Let's see what that's all about. As you can see, your first assessment is due in April, the end of, beginning of April, the fourth for SPs and the sixth for FETs. Last year, they asked that the SPs and the FETs don't submit on the same day because some of you do both. Although it's only a day or so apart, it does help a bit. Um, so there's the percentages, unit two is your lesson plan design. It's a speaking lesson plan for um, FETs and it's a listening lesson plan for SP. So they are different. And then unit three is a genre-based workshop presentation where you'll be explaining to teachers how to present a certain genre. FETs will do, I think it's um, a drama and a film study, whereas the SPs are going to look at a poem and an advertisement. So there are different things you're going to do. So they're not the same assignment. Okay, there we go. That is your first SS1, beginning of April. Okay, so have you been listening to me? So there's also a Kahoot quiz. If you go to Quick Links 1, um, I'll be able to find out on Canvas. This is informal. It's anonymous. I won't know who you are. You can put any name you like. But there will be, it closes, I think, on the 22nd, the Kahoot quiz. Um, it's only 10 multiple choice questions. It just tests how well you've been listening. Um, and then you'll see who the winner is. They'll have to give you the top three. Okay. It's how quick you do it and how fast you get it correct. Okay. So you have until the 22nd of March to complete this when the actual Kahoot quiz will end. So in the meantime, you've got time to listen to my welcome and then go and do the Kahoot quiz. So that's all from me for now. Um, best wishes for semester one. I'm sure I'm going to get to learn many of you a lot as soon as we get started. Wish you all the best for English um, teaching EFT, um, FET, teaching SP, teaching home language, teaching FEL. I take the three of you. Um, teaching English first additional language is done by Natalie Adams, and I'm sure she'll introduce herself as well. So Thank you for being part of this journey with me and um, we'll get to know each other quite well during the course of the semester. And just remember, I'm always available should you have any queries, I'm not sure of anything. If you're confused, um, traumatized, please get back to me. Okay, chat soon and take care. Stay safe too.